Hello, my name is Angel Ortiz. I am a senior here at Ashland University and the current president of uh, Unidad. I'm here with President Carlos Campo to talk a little bit about Hispanic heritage. So, my first question to you, obviously, is what does your Hispanic heritage mean to you? You know, it really frames my identity in many ways. I tell people with a name like Carlos Campo, you have to have a connection to the Latino heritage. And I know growing up, it was hard for me because my mother was Anglo. She was born in the U.S. She's Irish. Mm -hmm. And my father, coming from Cuba, was learning English. And so in mi casa, nosotros hablamos inglés, no español. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so it was difficult speaking just English in my home. And I felt the disconnect. My father has beautiful dark skin. I didn't have that. I didn't have the facility with the language. But in time, I've really come to love my heritage and understand that it's about music and culture and history and all of those things. They really frame who you are as a person. How was it living in that household? What side do you think really you adhere to the most with that? Well, it's interesting because I even talked to my kids about this and we didn't speak any Spanish in our home and yet they identify as Latinos. And so I think for us, even though we heard almost only English in the house, you know, when Spanish was spoken, it was when the family was all together. So, you know, to me, it didn't feel strange or awkward until later, you know, when I would actually be in other environments and only Spanish speakers were there and I felt like, my Spanish isn't so great. I, I was stumbling over words and, and s struggling to find the right words. That's when it was hard. And then sometimes when I was in a all white culture or group and people were, you know, making me feel like an outsider a little bit, you know, maybe making fun of my name or, you know, something along those lines. I didn't experience that much, honestly. So I think I saw both sides of that, but it never really felt uncomfortable once I kind of grew into it and said, this is who I am. So it's okay to have a bifurcated history and heritage. And even though I identify more as a Latino than an Irishman, I feel really comfortable you know, having that history be part of my past. Now, how do you, what does Hispanic Heritage Month like look to you? Like how do you celebrate that with you and your family? Yes, you know, it's one of the things I have a love-hate relationship with Hispanic Heritage Month and only because I feel like it's a little artificial. And I like the fact that we're stopping, pausing, and really reflecting on the incredible impact that Latinos have had in America. I think that's important to do, but I don't like it being segregated into a specific month. So I would say let's continue to celebrate all cultures all the time on our campus, but be intentional about it. What are some like Hispanic role models that you looked at or kind of drove you to be in the position that you are kind of today? You know, I think about a number of folks, and honestly, I start with my parents. Neither of them even graduated from high school, and yet my father and my mother promoted college to me from my earliest recollection. But then, you know, meeting other Hispanic professors as I continued to work in higher ed, who really challenged me to, to think bigger. I think it's one of the things that a lot of young people, particularly people of color, you know, dreaming big can be difficult if all the folks around you have, don't have those big dreams. And that's not always true, but I think it's one of those things that when I encountered professors, whether they be Hispanics or others, who said, God, you can be more, you know, dream bigger, think bigger. Those are the ones who are always inspiring to me. Now, being in, you know, in the position that you are too, you have a lot of influence over ways that, you know, essentially how the school can essentially run. Um, what do you think would be, like how are you um, making your efforts in terms of increasing the Latin presence on yeah. campus as well? Because, you know, we don't have as many Latin students on campus, but what do you think would be your ideas for trying to maybe increase that? You know, Angel, that the most important thing is to set the culture where people feel, people feel welcome, right? Mm -hmm. So having more Hispanic staff, his, you know, Spanish-speaking admissions officers, all of these things really matter. Certainly faculty, people in the classroom who are dealing directly with students who, even if they're not Hispanic, have history. You know, you've met a lot of our professors. You know, they may look very Anglo and may be born in the States, but they've spent a lot of time in Latin America. They're perfectly mm -hmm. fluent and they have a you know, a, a sort of Latinness to them, a, certainly an acceptance and a welcoming attitude. You know, one of the things I'd point to as well is we have partnered with Esperanza, which you may know that organization, right? It's in the Cleveland area, yeah. and we've sponsored students there. We continue to be one of their top scholarship sponsors. We've even had a donor who said they will double all of the scholarships from Esperanza for any students who come. So providing that access is really important. 
We're also members of College Now, which is a group in Cleveland that helps Hispanic students navigate higher education. So those are some of the ways that we work very directly with those partners to try to create a more welcoming partnership here on our campus. And I appreciate just having this conversation with you. Appreciate your leadership of Unidad and I think working together, you know, we can help make Ashland a more welcoming campus for all students, but with a particular focus on Hispanic students. Yeah. Thanks for your time this morning. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.